feel ready, have a drink of water, take your child's clothes. Um, don't push yourself, don't overexert yourself, just enjoy this time. If you want to spend the next 45 minutes lying on your mat in Shavasana, by all means do that. And that being said, if you want to come onto your mats and just give yourself a little wiggle around to get off any of that excess energy, little bits of static energy that might stay in your body. We want to start in a nice still place. So just shake it all off, maybe give those shoulders a little roll, maybe give yourself circles with the chest. Just rolling the whole way around. Really nice. Well done. And once you feel like you've got all that energy out, those little excess bits, I sometimes give my hands a little shake as well. I always have a lot of static energy kind of in my body when I get down on the mat and I need to give it a little wiggle and a shake out. So once you feel like you've got that all out, bring yourself onto your mat, palms on your knees facing up towards the sky, drop those shoulders down. Closing your eyes. Oh, yes, I should probably say, we're doing a full body, nice, juicy, dynamic vinyasa flow tonight. We're gonna get into the whole body. So we're not doing any key feet, key points. We're just gonna do the whole body tonight. So bring your palms onto your knees, drop those shoulders down, take a nice deep breath, closing the eyes. Inhale, we lengthen. And exhale, draw that navel in towards the spine, reversing the breath. Inhale, try and deepen that breath every time. Always teaching your body to use the full capacity of your lungs. Exhale, reverse the breath. And again, inhale. And exhale. Start to tune into your breath and into your body. And as you do that, tune out your surroundings. Tune out anything that is not serving you. Any wandering thoughts or worries. Anything you did before or need to do after, this is your time for you. And maybe we take an imaginary broom and start to sweep the mind clear of any clutter. I find it helps to visualize my mind as a room that's being emptied until it's completely clear with only your breath rushing in and out. And as we inhale, we feel the breath cleansing our bodies from the inside out, flowing through our organs, lifting us up on the mat, but grounding at the same time. Exhale, releasing bringing us back down to earth. I feel those sit bones grounding down into the mat, but as you do so, lift up through the spine, drop the shoulders down, neck long. So we're lifting and light, but grounded and steady. Let's check in with those key tension points. We tend to hold on to stress in really subtle ways, so it really helps to just check that we're letting go of those key points throughout the day. So Drop your shoulders down away from the ears. And as you do, lengthen your neck. Notice that you might have been holding them up, creating a little bit of tension in that shoulder girdle. Drop them down, lengthen. Start to soften the face, soften the features. Let go of any tightness or tension. Make sure you're not frowning or furrowing your brow unnecessarily. Face neutral and calm. I'm just letting go of the jaw, making sure it's soft. Unclench the back teeth. Draw the tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Maybe you have your mouth open ever so slightly. Maybe your tongue's just sticking out a little tiny bit. Maybe you're like a little puppy. And if you think you look silly, that's fine. No one can see you. I'll do it with you and loads of people can see me. And as you breathe here into your body, feeling yourself become calm and light on your mat, start to very gently mobilize. We'll take our chin towards our shoulder, it doesn't matter which one, and gently start to roll the head from shoulder to shoulder. Gentle roll, just start mobilizing gently. 
And if you want to progress that into a full roll the whole way around, then by all means do. I know some of you don't like a full neck roll and that's fine. But if you want to, just make sure you go both ways. Rolling one way, rolling back the other. Start to roll those shoulders as well up to your ears, down your spine. Imagine you're drawing pictures with those shoulder blades. Deep circles up to the ears, down the spine, really, really starting to mobilize and get into the shoulders. And you'll notice when you do a really deep shoulder roll, how nice it feels to lift them up, draw them down. It's almost like you're scratching an itch. Really nice. And just take your hands together in front of you, interlace the fingers, and then imagine that you're hugging a giant beach ball, making a circle shape with your arms. And as you do, curve the spine, make your body a C shape, and drop that chin to your chest. You'll feel those shoulders pulling apart at the back. Inhale here. Really nice, really feel that pulling. As you exhale, bring your arms up towards the sky, drop the shoulders down, neck long. Pushing upward like you're trying to push the sky away. And let's start to hinge across to the left, stretching the right side of the body. Make sure you keep those bum cheeks glued down on the mat. You're not lifting your right hip. But any point you feel like that hip is lifted, just come back a little bit. And you can take your left hand to your right wrist if you want to and just feel like you're pulling that arm across the room. Fingertips trying to touch the other side of the room. Keep the heart center open, try not to collapse forward. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, reaching, feeling that stretch from hip to fingertip. Really nice. Keep those bum cheeks down on the mat. Neck long, shoulders away from the ears. Try not to have a disappearing neck. One more breath. Gently back to center. Switch hands so your right hand comes to your left wrist and gently start to inch towards the right side of the room. Stretching the left side of our body this time from hip to fingertips. And remember to keep that neck long, no double chins. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, reach. Keep those bum cheeks planted nice and even on the mat. Keep that heart center open and feel that pull all the way down the left side of the body. Imagine you're trying to add extra inches to that side of the body. Inhale. And exhale. We're just lengthening out, bring yourself back to center. Take those arms out to the side in line with your shoulders and just give those wrists a little wiggle. Maybe wiggle the fingers as well. And as you do so, draw those arms behind you, interlace the fingers. Pull the shoulder blades together like chicken wings and opening out your chest, your heart center. Really nice deep breath in here. And exhale. And inhale, exhale, let go of the hands, but leave that right arm behind you. Keep it nice and straight like a secondary spine, like it's supporting you. Take your left hand now, bring it to the outside of your right knee. Gazing over your right shoulder, sit up nice and tall, inhale. Exhale, push that knee away and twist, trying to gaze over the shoulder. And remembering that twists are really, really good for us. They're a really nice way to decompress. So what we're doing here is we are compressing our organs. So we're releasing any toxins in the organs. And just really feel that compression as you push that knee away and twist, but try and keep yourself upright. Don't collapse into your back arm. It's there to support you. So we're really, really squeezing out all those toxins from the organs. And it's a really nice twist for the waist, the shoulders, the, shoulders, the spine. Gently bring yourself back to center. And when we release the twist, fresh blood flows through our organs. Take your left hand behind you now. Right hand comes to the outside of the left knee. Gaze over your left shoulder. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. And exhale, push that knee away and twist. So envision yourself as a dirty dishcloth. And you're squeezing out all that dirty water. Squeezing, squeezing, looking all the way behind you. Keeping yourself nice and upright. Shoulders down, keep that neck long. Really, really twist, push that knee away. One more deep breath, gently back to center. And imagine you're running fresh water through that dirty dish cup, making yourself nice and clean. Really nice, take those hands in front of you and bring yourself into an all fours position on your mat. Stacking your joints, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, tops of the feet on the mat. 
Make sure the spine's flat to begin with, so we don't want a little arch. You don't want to be sticking your bums up just yet. Keep that back nice and flat. Pushing down into your palms, your knees, and the tops of the feet. And I want you to feel the energy coming out of the hands. So you're almost trying to push away the mat, push away the earth, and lift off. And if you want to, you can tuck those toes under and lift your knees, hover them so you're engaging your core. Keep the back nice and flat, pushing into your heels, engaging through the glutes, the hamstrings, the core, and breathe here, inhale. And exhale. Really feel that engagement if you are lifting, if you're not pushing down into your palms and really feeling yourself forcing the ground away. Deep breath, inhale. Try not to lift the knees too high. You only want them about 10 to 15 centimeters off the mat maximum. Inhale. Exhale. Really nice. Give me five, four, pushing into those heels. Three, two, and one. Drop those knees and drop the navel to the floor. Hollow out the lower back. Gaze up towards the sky into your cow pose. Exhale. Arch like you're a scared cat. Drop the crown of the head towards the floor. Inhale. Opening the heart center, gazing upwards. And exhale. So we're mobilizing our spine in our cat cow. And if you like the movement of your cat cow, then by all means keep this going. If you would like to get a little deeper, if there's a part of your body that you feel really needs work, really needs to be woken up, then start to get a little weird if you want to get that wiggle on. Get into all the nooks and crannies of your body. It's always very personal to you which movement you choose at this point. And just use this time, use these breaths to really wake up the body. So maybe you just want to draw circles. Maybe you want to come all the way back into child's pose and just reach the wrists out. Maybe you just want to give yourself a little wiggle, head, neck, shoulders, spine. Maybe you want to draw figures of eight with your back. Maybe you want to push all the way forward into your cobra. Whatever feels good for you. Maybe you want to turn the hands around and stretch the wrists. So yesterday someone asked me about handstands, which by the way, I'm really horrible at. But if you are working on handstand, really good wrist stretch. Not for everyone, but it is a good one. And just take those breaths and really, really get into your body. Give me two more here, deep inhale. And exhale, lovely, and one more breath. And when you're done with that breath, bring yourself back to center. Take a nice deep breath, tuck that right toe under, and you're gonna kick that leg up behind you. So your knee is bent, your right foot is flexed. And maybe you're happy here. Maybe you want to take that left hand and just triple those fingers out in front. And maybe you want to lift that left arm. Remember to keep that core engaged. You're balancing now. And maybe you want to reach that left arm back, take hold of the right foot, and kick the right foot into your left hand. Opposite leg stretch. So we're getting into our shoulder. Find a drishti, a place to rest your gaze, because you are balancing. And whichever version you are in of this stretch, give me five four, three, two, and one. Drop the hand, but keep the foot flexed and the knee raised. Push down through the palms, tuck that left toe under, and push up into your three-legged dog. Join the navel in towards the spine. Keep that knee bent, the foot flexed. If you're happy here, lovely. If you want to open the hip, you can bring that right leg up and over as though you're about to walk all the way over, gazing underneath your right arm. Maybe you're happy here. Maybe you want to walk the whole way over if wild thing is in your practice. Lift those hips high. On the board of your right foot, reach back with that right hand. Give yourself that nice arch in the spine, reaching all the way back. Well done. Really nice. Wherever you are, give me five, four, three, two and one wild things bring yourself back to your three-legged dog everyone back to their three-legged dogs take a nice deep breath here straight that right leg out behind you into a full three-legged dog and then take a nice deep breath draw that knee in towards your chest and push back into your three-legged draw the knee towards your right elbow push back three-legged dog really nice pull to your opposite elbow push back three-legged and to the center. 
And three-legged dog, well done. And to the right elbow. And three-legged dog. And to the left. And three-legged dog. Let's go once more, center. Three-legged. To the right, well done. Three-legged dog. And to the left. And three-legged dog, lovely. Draw that knee into the center, plant that right foot. Come into a low lunge, untucking the foot. Hands down on either side of that front foot. So low lunge, also known as runner's lunge. Really good for stretching the hip flexors, quads and hamstring strength as well. Bring those arms up in line with your ears, inhale. And exhale. And if you want to keep in your low lunge, by all means, you can stay here. And if you want to take a little, a little hip tap with me, you're going to take that left hand down onto the mat and just bring it to the side of the mat. So we're taking the mat out of the equation. Reach that right arm out in front. So your bent knee arm, you're going to circle that arm all the way back. And as you do, you're going to turn onto the sides of your feet, tap the hips on the mat and bring yourself back. And you want to come up onto your back foot as well as you're doing that and lift the leg. And let's go one more time if you want to. Circle that right arm all the way back, turn onto the sides of your feet, tap the hips and circle back. And once more for luck, circle that arm all the way back, tap the sides of the feet, tap the hips and back. Well done. Take those hands down on either side of that front foot. Step back into your plank position. So you have options here. Option one, you can push straight back up into your downward dog. Or if you'd like to join me for a little vinyasa, tuck those elbows in, come down through your chaturanga. Push forward up with facing dog. Really good for your posture. This one, make sure the thighs are lifted and push back. Downward dog. So first downward dog of the class. So if you want to soften your knees, by all means do. I tend to soften my knees for the first few downward dogs that I do. So pushing your palms down into the mat, push into the outside of your little fingers, very gently maybe soften your elbows, drawing the shoulders away from the ears, draw that navel in towards the spine. You want a straight line from, from your tailbone all the way down to your fingers. Gazing between your arms, so you're looking at between your legs or at your belly button. Drawing the heels down towards the earth. And you can straighten the legs if you want to, but make sure that it doesn't compromise that straight back. That's more important than straight legs. And let's take a nice deep breath here, raise up on your heels. And exhale, lower. Inhale, lifting up. This is really good for the calves and the hamstrings. Exhale, lower. And inhale, keep that navel drawn in, keep that back flat. Exhale, lower. Inhale, make sure the shoulders are rotated outwards, not pulling in. That will stop you getting a rotator cuff injury. And pulling down. And let's go three. And lower. And one, well done. And lower. Last time, really good if you've got tight calves and hamstrings, this one. And lower, deep breath, way forward into a high plank position. Body in a nice straight line, core engaged, wrists under shoulders, body nice and tight. Start to drop the knees and as you do, push the bum back towards the heels. Push back into your downward dog. So we're going to do four of those little circles. When you're ready, inhale, way forward, high plank. Drop the knees, but just hover them. Send the bum back towards the heels. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, high plank, knees drop, bum back. Downward dog, lovely, and let's go, high plank. Knees, bum, downward dog, last time, high plank. Knees, bum, downward dog, take a deep breath. Gaze straight ahead, pull yourself slightly forward and drop the knees down, untuck the feet, take a breath. If you need to, give those wrists a little, little break, just give them a shake. I like to do this like I'm squeezing um, stress balls. It just kind of releases the tendons a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but I get, I get really achy wrists, so it's nice to do a little stretch in between. Changing sides, when you're ready, bring yourself back into that all fours position. Tuck that left toe under, flexing the foot, and you're going to kick that left leg up behind you, knee bent. Take a nice deep breath here. If you're happy here, lovely. If you want to trickle those right fingers forward, then by all means do. If you want to lift the right arm so you're balancing, make sure the back stays straight and you're gazing straight ahead. And if you want to reach that right arm behind, take hold of your left foot and lift up into a opposite leg stretch. So you're getting into the shoulders, 
Find a place to rest your gaze, a drishti. Really nice, everyone. And breathe here, give me five, four, whichever version you're in, three, two, and one. Letting go with the hand, but keep the foot behind you flexed and lifted. Push down through the palms, make sure there's an equal distribution of weight. Tuck that right toe under, push up, three-legged dog. But keep the foot flexed, the knee bent. Nice straight back. If you want to, you can open up the hips here, gazing underneath your left armpit. And if you want to walk the whole way over, if you've got wild thing in your practice, by all means do. Keep those hips nice and high, whichever version you're in, let's give five, four, three, two, and one. Wild things, back to your three-legged dog and everyone straining that leg out behind you. And let's take a nice deep inhale, draw the knee in towards the chest and push back. Three-legged dog, well done. Knee to the left elbow, push back three-legged. Knee to the opposite elbow, push back three-legged dog. Knee to centre and three-legged. Knee to the left, three-legged dog, well done. Knee to the right, three-legged dog, last time to centre. And three-legged. And to the left, well done. And three-legged dog. And to the right. Three-legged dog. And to the centre, plant that left foot. Low lunge now on the left-hand side. Make sure that left foot is underneath the left knee. So a uh, runner's lunge. Stretching our hip flexors, quads and hamstring strength. Arms up in line with your ears. Make sure the knee doesn't go past those toes. Breathe in here. If you're happy holding this, by all means, stay here. If you want to take your little hip tap, right hand's going to come to the outside of your mat. Tuck that right toe under and just lift that leg. Bring the left arm out in front and you're going to circle the arm back. And as you do, turn onto the sides of your feet, tap the hips and bring yourself back. Let's go again. Circle, sides of the feet, tap your hips to the floor. Circle back. One more time, circling all the way back. Sides of the feet, tap the hips, and back to centre. Place those palms down on either side of that front foot, and push back into your plank position. And again, options. Push straight back up into your down dog, or join me for a little vinyasa. Tuck those elbows in, come down through chaturanga. Push forward, up with facing dog. Pushing back, down with facing, really nice. Take a nice deep breath here. Dropping the knees down onto the mat. Gaze straight ahead, push your chest down towards the mat. Reach your arms out in front and bring yourself into your extended puppy pose. So your chest down, bum in the air. Feet out behind you, parallel like train tracks. Drawing that navel in towards the spine, feeling that stretch through the chest and the abdomen and the shoulders. Maybe coming up on your fingertips if you want to get even deeper into those shoulders. Deep breath here, inhale. And exhale slightly, elevate yourself onto your forearms. We're gonna thread the needle, so maybe draw your knees in a little bit. So you're kind of in an all fours position, but on your forearms. Reach that right arm out, take the left arm and post it underneath the right. We're gonna roll onto our left shoulder, so we're opening the shoulders. Trying to pull yourself through underneath that right shoulder. So we're gonna stretch the shoulders out one way, and then we're gonna do a really deep shoulder stretch on the other side as well and pull them the other way. So these are really, really nice shoulder stretches. Really trying to pull yourself under that armpit, feeling that twist in the shoulder girdle, rolling onto your left shoulder. The harder you try and pull yourself underneath, the deeper you'll get into that stretch. And take one more deep breath and then pull yourself back through, reach that left arm out. Take the right arm and post it underneath the left armpit. Gazing underneath your left armpit, trying to reach all the way through, rolling onto your right shoulder. And breathe, inhale. And exhale. In a minute, we're gonna counter these stretches with a really, really deep shoulder roll. Take a nice deep breath. Gently pull that right arm back. Gaze straight ahead, keeping the palms flat. 
keeping the arms about hip width apart and draw your chest along the mat, bringing yourself into your sphinx pose. So you look like one of those little statues in Egypt, pushing down through the palms. So sphinx pose, it's really good for lower back pain. Lengthening through your chest and your abdomen, shoulders down your spine and neck long. And don't forget the bottom half of your body. So we tend to forget about it in this pose because we think it's all upper body. But I want you to point those toes so the knees lift off the mat and you'll feel that engagement in your glutes and your hamstrings and your lower back. And then push up. So you're stretching that chest and shoulders as well. And we're just going to hold a nice engaged sphinx pose for a, li for a little minute. Take a deep breath. And then gently bring your right arm in line with the mat. So just bring it out to the side. And as you do, roll onto your right hip. Bring your right ear to the mat. And just roll into that right shoulder. Take your left arm and just bend it. Place the fingers down on the mat so you can roll into your shoulder. Start to send that left leg behind you. So you're using it as a lever to get deeper into that shoulder roll. You can also bend the left leg. So that's your top leg and place that left foot flat and really roll into the shoulder. This is a very intense shoulder stretch. So if you do feel that it's a little bit too much, bring yourself back to centre, take your sphinx and meet us back there in a minute. Everyone that's still rolling onto their shoulders, give me one more breath. Really indulge in that shoulder roll and then gently pull yourself back to centre, take your sphinx pose. Engaging, point the toes, lift the knees, feel that engagement in the lower back, gaze straight ahead, shoulders down, inhale. Start to bring that left arm out to the side, rolling onto your left hip, coming up on your right fingertips. Rolling into the shoulder, maybe taking that right leg back. And if you want to place that right foot flat and roll into that right shoulder, then by all means do. <sighs> Lovely. Give me five, four, really roll into that shoulder. Indulge in the stretch. Three, two, and one. Gently back to center. And we're gonna take our locust pose. So here you have three options. Option one, you're gonna bring those arms back, lift the top half of your body, head, neck, shoulders, chest, and arms. Option two, lifting the feet as well, so we're bouncing on our hip bones. And option three, bringing the arms out in front, making it even harder. This is really good for releasing lower back pain. It's good for strengthening the arms and legs. And hold here, give me five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the arms down by the side. Drop your left ear to the mat and gaze to the right. And switch sides, right ear to the mat and gaze to the left. and bring your palms in front, back into your sphinx pose. And you're just gonna tuck those toes under and we're gonna lift ourselves into a forearm plank. If this is a little bit too much, feel free to come into your normal plank. From here, we're just gonna do a little core burner. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna rock on your feet, push yourself all the way forward, find your edge, push back. Five of those in time with your breath, five. And back, you can roll onto the tops of your feet if you want to, four. And back, three, and back, two, and back, well done, and one, and back, really nice, start to walk those feet in, taking your dolphin pose, and if you are in plank, you can take your downward dog, we're going to do our dolphin kisses, so dolphin, kind of like downward dog, way more intense, a little bit more horrible, but gets into our core and our shoulders, Take a nice deep breath and you're going to start to bring your head forward like you're going to kiss the mat and back. Five of those. Five and back. Four. Back. Three. Really nice. Two. Well done. And one. Drop those knees, heels together, knees apart. Straighten those arms out in front. Forehead down onto the mat and take a chance. Breathe it in. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Place your palms flat. Bring yourself up into your all fours position. Tuck those toes and push up into a downward facing dog. 
Deep breath here, inhale, send that right leg all the way back into your three-legged dog. And then pass that knee forward towards your chest, plant the right foot, make sure you're grounded through both feet and bring yourself up into a high lunge. Make sure the hips are under the shoulders. Make sure that knee is above the ankle. Inhale, exhale, sitting into that front knee bend. Turn that left foot out, tuck the tailbone under, gaze down those front fingertips into your warrior two. Let me switch sides because as usual, I'm on the wrong side. Gazing down those front fingertips, start to hinge forward, turn the palm upwards. And as you do, start to bring yourself all the way back into your reverse warrior, your peaceful warrior, reaching back with the right arm. The left arm goes all the way down the left leg. If you want to take a half bind here, bring that left arm all the way around to your right thigh. Really nice. And sink into that front knee bend, deep breath. Gently start to open the arms back out in line, back to your warrior two. Turn the palms outwards and start to hinge forward, bring yourself into your triangle pose. So make sure the shoulders are stacked, the arms are in a nice straight line. If this is a little bit much, you can bring your forearm onto your knee and reach that left arm over the top in your extended side angle. Make sure there's a straight line from foot to fingertip and don't just be hanging out at the pub. Make sure that that chest is nice and lifted. Keep that alignment. Make sure those hips are aligned. Really nice. And those of you that would like to take a little bind, by all means, bring that right arm underneath the right leg, left arm over the top, opening that chest out. Lovely, well done. Breathe in here. And take one more deep breath, keeping that chest open if you're binding. And then we're going to start to straighten both legs. Feel free to step that back leg in a little bit if you want to. So if you're in a bind, you're now being a straight leg bind. Everyone else will have their arms open. So we're going to join them. Open those arms out into your triangle pose. Make sure, again, your finger to finger, nice straight line, shoulders stacked on top of each other. Hips aligned. If you want to make sure your hips are aligned, you can take your left hand, pop it in the small of your back and gently push your body, push your hips into alignment. You'll feel when they're aligned. This pose probably a little bit uncomfortable. And if you are uncomfortable in it, it probably means you're doing it right. Gaze up at those extended fingertips. Take a nice deep breath, extended triangle. Well done, lovely. And gently windmill both hands around on either side of that front foot. Bend the knee. Place the palms flat, step back into a plank position and options here to either push straight back up into your downward dog or tuck in, take a chaturanga, push forward up and facing and push back, down facing dog. And I'm just going to switch sides again. Really nice, everybody take a deep breath, send that left leg all the way up towards the sky, three leg. Passing that left leg all the way forward, plant the left foot. Make sure the left knee is above. Make sure that you've got your balance. Really nice. High lunge, really good one for knee strengthening and working on your balance. It activates all the muscles, areas that you need to have nice, strong knees. Make sure the hips are under the shoulders, arms in line with your ears. Deep breath. Open those arms out to the side. Turn the right foot outwards. Tuck the tailbone under. Arms in line with your shoulders like aeroplane wings. Gaze down those front fingertips. Warrior two. Start to hinge forward, turn the left hand up, send the right arm down the back of the right leg, left arm up and over. Reverse warrior, peaceful warrior. And if you want to take your bind, right arm comes all the way around to touch your left foot. Well done, lovely. Sink into that front knee bend, deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Really nice. Take one more breath here. Open those arms out again in line with your shoulders and then turn the palms outwards, hinge forward, triangle. Make sure, straight line, finger to finger, shoulders stacked. And if you're not happy here, left forearm onto left knee, onto left thigh, right arm up in line with your ear, make sure it's a straight line, toes to finger, make sure you're not hanging out with the pub and slouching. You wanna keep that chest open, keep your hips aligned. And those of you binding, Left arm comes underneath the left leg, right arm over the top, chest open. So try not to collapse in a bind. You want to keep yourself still open. Well done, breathing here, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. 
exhale everyone's starting to straight that front leg so we're getting both legs nice and straight and everyone opening their arms out into your extended triangle try and gaze up at that extended arm if you want to make sure those hips are aligned take the right hand into the small of the back gently push those hips into alignment reach the arms up straight line finger to finger shoulders stack reaching up gazing at that extended arm deep breath inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale windmill those hands down on either side of that front foot bend the front knee place the palms flat step back plank position either pushing back into your downward dog or take your vinyasa with me elbows in come back push forward up we're facing dog push back down we're facing dog take a deep breath drop down onto your knees and in your kneeling position, we're going to take our thunderbolt pose. So you're just going to tuck your toes under and sit on your heels. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch out our feet and our shins. So we're going to take thunderbolt first. So just placing your palms on your knees and breathe, allowing your shoulders to drop down. And breathe through yourself, pushing into the backs of your feet. If this starts to hurt at any point, untuck the feet, take a breath. So the reason we're doing this is we're about, we're going to do toes pose in a minute, which is really going to counter this. So toes pose stretches out the shins and the feet, and it's really good for plantar fas fasciitis, which I can never say properly, which is damage to the connective tissue in the arches of the feet, which causes really bad feet and heel pain. It's common with runners. So I know a lot of us are running at the moment, so it's good to add this one into our repertoire. So take a deep breath, untuck the feet. Sit your bum on the heels, reach your hands behind you and gently start to lift those legs just a little bit. You'll feel that stretch down the front of your feet and your shins. So this is the one. It's a little bit intense, a little bit uncomfortable, but just hold here. Give me five, four, three, two, and one. Drop the knees. Well done. Take yourself back into your kneeling position. Bring your right arm in front of your face and take your left arm up underneath and wrapping into your eagle arms. So trying to bring your palms together, if they don't come together, do not worry at all. We're, this is a good one for the shoulders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a few eagle arm lifts to open our shoulders and then we're gonna take our camel pose. So take a nice deep breath, inhale, start to lift those arms up towards the sky, gazing up at your thumbs arch the back so we're doing like a cat cow movement with our spine as well mobilizing that area exhale rolling in inhale lifting the arms gazing up at the thumbs exhale c shape with the spine inhale lovely well done exhale really feel those shoulders open do a lot of shoulder openness today and lift and lower give me one more on this side inhale and exhale well done let go of the arms just bring them on either side of you take a breath inhale left arm is going to come in front of you bringing your hand in front of your face right arm comes up and underneath wrap the arms together almost like you're tying them in a knot bring the palms together if you can but if you can't don't worry wherever you can get to is absolutely perfect inhale start to reach those arms up towards the sky gazing at the thumbs exhale curve the spine chin to your chest inhale lift well done exhale inhale and exhale inhale well done really nice and exhale really feel those shoulders opening one more time lift lovely and curving under gently unwrap the arm Bring those hands on either side. Take a deep breath. You're going to bring yourself up into a high kneel. So from the front, you want your knees about hip width apart. Feet and knees out behind you parallel like train tracks. And so camel pose is a nice deep back bend and it's really good for, uh, for the shoulders and it's good for bad posture as well because it almost pushes you in the opposite direction if you're slouching but it is very intense. So hold it for however long you would like. It also, deep back bends, they release a lot of emotion and they can make us feel quite restricted in the chest. So if you feel like that, 
always come out the way that you came in. Take your child's pose, take a little breath. So let's bring our hands into the small of our back. Gaze straight ahead and start to look up towards the sky. And as you do, push your hips forward and just give yourself a little bend in the back. Maybe we're happy here. And maybe you wanna drop those hands back onto your ankles and let your head roll the whole way back. Push those hips forward. The aim is to make your body a kind of D shape. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Really nice, inhale. And if at any point it feels too much, come out the way you came in. Inhale. And exhale. Enjoy that feeling of that intense back bend, your heart center opening, chest and abdomen stretching, pushing those hips forward, inhale. And exhale, take one more breath. And then gently walk your hands up your spine. Sit your bum back on your heels. And reach the arms either out in front or you can bring them down by your side. Into your child's pose. And breathe in. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, take your palms in front. Bring yourself into an all fours position, tuck those toes under, push up into your downward dog. Last downward dog of the class, draw that navel in towards the spine. Maybe give those feet a little walk out here. Maybe you wanna give yourself a little twist where you can draw a circle with your left foot and just bring it behind the right and just open that twist up to the left. Make sure you keep those shoulders nice and even though. And then you can take the same thing on the other side. So bring the feet back, take the right foot in a circle behind the left and just give yourself a little opening up. Well done. Feet back to center, gaze straight ahead, slight bend in the knees, step float or jump between the hands into a seated position on the mat. Plant your feet flat. We're gonna take our boat pose, good one for the core, good one for our balance. Options here, option number one, Hands behind you. Lift the feet into a tabletop position. Keep your spine nice and flat, core engaged. If you feel like you want to, you can lift the arms. Option two, balancing on those sit bones. Make sure the spine stays straight, engage that core. Option three, for those of you that want to, straight the legs, get a little shake on, and hold here, engage in that core. Well done. Keep that back straight, looking at your feet. Well done, everyone, really nice. Core engage, give me five, four, three, well done, two, 2.5, two and three quarters, two and seven eighths, and one, very slowly start to bring yourself down onto the mat, peel the spine down first. Keep the feet lifted, keep the head and shoulders lifted, keep your arms lifted. Imagine you're trying to reach towards the feet. Stop when the feet are about 20 centimeters off the mat and really reaching towards them, engage that core in your dish pose. Give me five, four, don't hold your breath. I know some of you are doing it. Three, two, and one. Let go, bring those arms down by your side and release, deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Gently take your feet into a tabletop position. Bring both knees over to the left and gaze to the right, twisting that spine. Just a little gentle release. Lovely. Back to center. Drop those knees to the right, gaze to the left. Really nice. Gently back to center and cross your legs. Bring your right knee on top first and try and take hold of your opposite feet with your hands and start to pull the legs apart but towards you at the same time. So this is a really good one. Your reclined cow face, really good for um, increasing mobility in the hips. So this is also another good one if you're running to do before or and after your run. Pull those feet towards you. 
Also nice to massage the spine on the mat a little bit. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Give me one more here. Gently release, switch legs. So you're bringing your left leg on top. Take hold of the feet again. Start to pull them apart and towards you at the same time. Really feel that stretch in your hip flexors. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Really nice, give me one more breath here. Really get as deep into that stretch as you can. Lovely. Unravel, start to straighten your legs, bring the arms above your head. You guys know the drill by now. Full body stretch, point those fingers, point those toes. Tension in every part of your body. So this is the biggest stretch you'll do in the entire class. I want you to imagine someone's got you by the fingers, someone's got you by the toes. They're pulling you from one side of the room to the other. You can't get away. They're trying to add extra inches onto your body. The tension is unreal. Your limbs should literally be shaking. And put all of that physical tension Every single part of your body, including your face, don't miss out on your face. Beady eyes, screw that face up, make the ugliest face you've ever made in your life. Shoulders up to the ears, everything that I've told you not to do in the class, do it now. Scrunching up, a million double chins, reaching, 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 reaching. And while we're pulling all this physical tension in, pull your mental tension in as well. So everything that's been pissing you off, everything that's annoying you, everything that's just really, really getting to you, pour it all in. We're going to make a big old tension bomb and release it. So just like you almost want to scream and actually if you're alone in the house, scream. Feel free to just scream and just get it all out. Just really, really release. Build it up, build it up. Give me five, four, keep stretching. And one, release. Bring your arms down by your side. Let your feet fall open, melt into the mat. Deep breath, inhale. Exhale, your heart is probably going quite fast. Just let it slow down. Feel yourself melt into the mat and take this moment to have a drink of water, grab a jumper, some socks, a blanket, a cushion, whatever you want for your shavasana. Dim the lights, pop on some music. So I fully recommend taking shavasana lying on your backs on the mats, but obviously you can take it however you would like. You have a very deep bend in the back. You might want to take it with bent knees. On the other hand, Shavasana is not for everyone. I know some people don't enjoy it. I definitely will not be offended if you don't want to do it and if you sign off now. Um, but if you do want to do it lovely, bringing yourself down onto the mats, getting nice and comfortable, close those eyes. Let's bring ourselves back to where we were at the beginning of the class. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Expand your abdomen, send all of that air down towards the bottom of your lungs. Filling them like a glass all the way to the top. And as you exhale, reverse the breath, navel to spine. Inhale. And exhale. Start to tune out your distractions. Reach back for that imaginary broom, sweep the mind clear of clutter, wandering thoughts, anything that is not serving you. Focus in on that slow and steady rise and fall of your breath. Check in with those key tension points. Shoulders down away from the ears. Neck long. Facial features soft and gentle. Jaw unlocked. Tongue down away from the roof of the mouth. Feel your breath wash through you as you inhale as though it's cleansing you. Exhale, releasing anything you don't want inside. 
Take your attention to your feet. Feel them fall open on the mat, each toe unraveling one by one. Your ankles, calves, knees and thighs lightweight as though someone has taken the batteries straight out of you. All the way up to the base of your spine and feel each vertebrae trickling down into the mat like water. All the way up to your shoulders, feeling them melt further down your spine, grounding down into the mat, melting away like lava melting away from your ears, leaving your neck long, giving it space to grow. Your head is light, free of any worries, free of any tension. Facial features gentle, jaw soft, arms lightweight at your side. Allow each finger to unravel, palms open. And finally, take your attention to your chest and your abdomen. That slow and steady rise and fall, the rhythm of your breath, guiding you, guiding your body into a deep sense of calm allowing you to let go of anything that is causing you any sort of stress or tension. Deepening your breath, inhale and exhale. And as you allow yourself to give into your breath, feel yourself become completely lightweight on your mat. So light that you could lift up off of the mat and float away. Allow only a gentle breeze to push you along. Enjoying the ride as you inhale and exhale. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes to draw awareness back into your bodies. Hugging your knees into your chest and gently rocking from side to side to release your spine on the mat. And bring yourself over onto the right hand side into a fetal position. In your own time, bringing yourself up to seated, bringing your palms on your knees, facing up towards the sky. And take a nice deep inhale through the nose. And as you exhale, let out a deep sigh, like you're letting everything go. <sighs> and again, inhale. <sighs> One more time. One more for luck. Let it all out. Inhale. Ah, draw your palms together at your heart center. And thank you all so much for sharing your evening with me and your practice. It is as always an absolute delight. And uh, stay happy, healthy, and safe. Namaste. And as usual, if you do have any suggestions of things that you would like to practice, by all means, pop them in the comments. Um, we are gonna do handstand drills at some point in the next week or so. We're not actually going to do handstand practice, A, because I am not the best at handstands, 
I also don't have that much space to do handstands and I don't really, really want to be teaching handstands online. Um, I feel like it might be a bit da dangerous, but what we'll do is we'll do it, a class that will be built around if you guys are practicing handstands. So things like arm and wrist strengthening, um, that kind of thing. So those of you that don't want to do handstands, it will still be a good class. And we're also going to do restorative on Wednesday evenings as well. Well, Wednesday this evening, um, just so there's a, another restorative in the week. Um, other than that, feel free to drop me what you guys would like to do and have a lovely rest of your night. Is that my Lucy? Yes, we'll do more seated twists. Twists. We will do more seated twists, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm not doing more seated twists. Seated twists are the best. Uh, we'll do more seated twists in tomorrow's class. Standing poses. Yes, sorry. We didn't do any today or yesterday, but we will. Tomorrow I'll do like a, a good standing class. We'll do lots of lots of standing stuff tomorrow. Tell me something creepy. You are the only person. Oh, that's not creepy. But I love having all of you guys here every night. You literally are saving my lockdown. So have a lovely rest of your evening, everybody. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Thunderbolt can be a bit pinchy. Um, it's a little bit mental and a little bit intense, but it's really, really good. If you're a runner, I would say doing those two stretches, the toes pose and Thunderbolt's really, really good. So I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Have a lovely evening.